Before the creation of Lake Nasser, crocodiles were endangered in Egypt. The abundant fish, calm waters, and the lace-like geography of the cores have given them the perfect environment in which to thrive once more. The lake literally saved the species. Fishermen, however, aren't necessarily thrilled at the demographic boom that's happened over the past few decades. Currently, the crocodile population is estimated at between 15 and 20,000. We hunt crocodiles with a big fish on a hook. Then we put a piece of wood in its mouth and tie it with a rope. That way, its teeth sink in the wood and it can't open its jaw. After that, we pull it ashore. We take its skin to sell to merchants who pay 12 or 13 euros. The skins are used to make bags and shoes. The crocodiles and fishermen settle in the same spots, where the most fish are found. Inevitably, things get a little tense between the competing predators. If we cast our nets along the shore at night, the crocodiles get caught in them and completely tear them apart. That's why we hunt them. People hunt them because they're really dangerous. If they attack someone, they kill and eat him. They also attack our livestock when they go near the shore. They're not our friends. Back in ancient Egypt, however, crocodiles were venerated. Entire temples were even devoted to them, like the temple of Kam Ombo, located a few kilometers north of the lake. The crocodile god Sobek was intimately linked to the Nile and Egypt's prosperity. The god Sobek was one of the most important Egyptian deities in all of its pantheon. He was noted for many things, but chief amongst them was the fact that he was a solar god, god of the sun. He was also associated with water, the inundation, and therefore he was important for fertility and in particular agriculture, because you need both the water and the sun to make your crops flourish. The association with the sun no doubt came from the sight of crocodiles basking along the banks of the Nile. Like all reptiles, they constantly need to warm themselves in the sun's bright rays. Sobek was worshipped not just as a statue, but also as a living god. Here in this pool at Komombo, he was kept as a living crocodile. And the priests of Sobek were very happy to take care of him because he would be fed, he would be given sweetmeats, he would be uh, sung to, he would be perhaps even massaged, and he also was given beautiful earrings of gold and also bracelets of gold so he shone like the sun. Ancient Egyptians believed crocodiles had divinatory powers. They remarked that the creatures could predict how high the Nile would rise during the flood. Female crocodiles would lay their eggs at specific points along the bank of the Nile. And in fact, they knew before the flood happened where it would come so they could predict the height of the flood, and their nests would always be a little bit higher. So by looking at where crocodiles were making their nests, the ancient Egyptians were in fact able to judge the height of the flood. The temple of the god Sobek was very important in ancient Egypt. Pilgrims would come from far away to be healed here. They would use crocodiles particularly for medicine. So you would have the fat and the dung, 
and the oil all used for different things. In fact, crocodile fat, when rubbed on the hair, was supposed to be a cure for baldness. And every bit of the crocodile was useful, even the penis, because some of the penises were as much as one meter long. So of course, this was a symbol of male virility. And uh, even today, in some of the more folkloric customs, pieces of crocodile penis are cut off, ground up and mixed with black honey, and then men eat it so that they can become very, very strong. Once the sacred crocodile had died, the priest would very carefully mummify the crocodile and either bury it in a catacomb or else even in the temples. These mummies have been found by archaeologists, numbering in the hundreds of thousands, and these are very useful tools to understand the crocodile cult. More than 2,000 years later, these mummies have led to a fascinating scientific discovery. Scientists have analyzed the mitochondrial DNA of crocodile mummies as well as of live crocodile populations and they have found that there are actually two different kind of crocodiles found in Egypt. One is the Crocodilus niloticus and the other one is the Crocodilus sucus. And it's very interesting because the sucus is a much calmer kind of animal. It isn't as fierce, it isn't as nasty, although it looks just like the other one. This means, probably, that the priests of ancient Egypt would have kept the sucus in the ponds in the temple because it was less likely to attack and savage them as well as the visitors. This study has shown that the sucus crocodile, highly present in West Africa, no longer exists along the Nile. Today, all we find in Lake Nasser are the more aggressive endemic variety, the Crocodilus niloticus. It is quite possible, based on the scholarly findings of the DNA, that the crocodiles that were worshipped in Egypt actually were not native to the country, but were instead brought in from West Africa, maybe as gifts or maybe as uh, special imports for the gods. Perhaps these sacred crocodiles were offered to the pharaoh by an African king, but for the time being, no archaeological clues have been found to back up this hypothesis. Nubians perpetuate the cult of the crocodile and have maintained powerful ties with the animal. It's not rare to see a stuffed or painted crocodile on the front of their homes. For them, it acts as a protective symbol and a sign of prestige. Some of them even keep live crocodiles in their homes for good luck. This traditional practice is illegal since the Nile crocodile is a protected species.